Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Today, we're gonna show you how we prune panicle hydrangeas. So welcome to our garden. Yes, it is panicle hydrangea pruning day. We have over 140 hydrangeas in our garden. The majority are panicle hydrangeas, and we love panicle hydrangeas in our garden because they bloom on new wood. And what that means is that you are guaranteed to have flowers every season. So if a deer comes along and munches on them, you're still gonna get flowers. If they experience winter dieback from freezing and thawing, you're still going to get flowers. If you prune them incorrectly, you're still going to get flowers. So what we're gonna do today is kind of walk you through our panicle hydrangeas starting with our youngest because i feel like most people when they go to the garden center they're going to pick up a two gallon or three gallon specimen maybe they'll pick up a five gallon but it's pretty rare that it's going to be anything bigger than that or more established and right over here to my left there is a grouping of three little lime punch hydrangeas these again are panicle hydrangeas and they're going to all have that cone shaped bloom they'll start out white most of them will fade to pink as the season progresses and the fluctuation in temperatures happen so this is a trio of little lime punch just planted last year they were two gallon specimens and i kind of figured this was a great place to start because this is what most of you will have when you get home from the garden center so christopher come on and zoom in these i think were pretty well maintained yeah, the branching uh, the on center. them looks pretty good. Yeah. And we kind of have like a three bud system going. When I look at these, I think overall they don't look bad at all. But I want them to be a more uniform shape. And I want them to put out lots of new blooms. So I'm going to give them a pretty hard cut back. I'm going to actually go over to this one first, Christopher. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look for anything that's really little like this. Anything that's thinner than a pencil, I'm just gonna take off. Get rid of it. Yeah, because we don't want the shrub putting growth into these tiny little branches when they can be putting growth into the big branches. And when the shrub is this small, there's gonna be a lot of these little branches, right? So overall, I think that looks good. And so now what I'm thinking is I want everything to be around the same height. I'm going to go ahead and find the biggest branch, which is here. If I pruned off a third of this branch, so this branch goes all the way up to here, it would probably bring it to about here. And that could work. I can start there and see what I think. What do you think, Christopher? I think that wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, so if you look here, there's swollen buds right here. They're not very swollen, just very lightly swollen. And I'm going to prune right above that. And I'm going to find its neighboring and prune right above that. This one has branched out already. So I'm just going to cut these two here. So this is going to send out two branches right here. This will send out two branches here and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go around, kind of get them all to be the same height. The center of the shrub, I wanna leave them a little bit taller. This is crossing, but I think because it's the first year, I'm gonna leave them. But maybe I'll cut it pretty short down there. You can't go wrong, really, when you're pruning panicle hydrangeas. And now I'm just kind of going back around. I like it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think it works. We've kind of got a taller in the middle. They get smaller as they go around. This one right here had some dieback. I'm just gonna cut it. But also if you look in, you see that ring of green. That means these are alive and well. So now in this true of three, we kind of have that one to use as our guide. We want everything to kind of be the same size and shape as that one. So they're very uniform. So just kind of start, always cut 
taller than you think you need to cut at first because so your first cuts it almost looks like it's really just shrink it a little bit and then you can do your uh design work yeah i mean this this branching on this little lime punch is very young so it's not like it's it's it doesn't quite have the established branching of some of our older hydrangeas. So right now it's just about kind of getting that established for them. Again, I'm cutting out any of these tiny ones. And there's honestly, these don't have many branches on them. So it's a pretty these quick are quick chore. and easy. Yeah. I mean, when we get to that limelight hedge, it's going to be a different story. And really, I'm not seeing any of the three D's. Yeah, no dead disease crossing. These were well cared for in their in their containers. So that's two all done. Again, I'm just cutting right above the nodes of the buds. And then I'm just going to go into this one. And wherever I cut, there's either going to be two or three branches coming out of the nodes below it. So... So really in the first year or how many years do you think it is that you just do this kind of pruning before they're established and you change your routine? Uh, next year. Next year. Okay. It'll change. How's that look compared to the other? Are they all look three pretty look uniform? I think they look pretty uniform. This one, I don't, it, I, maybe it's because it gets the sun from around the house sooner. It was a little bit bigger than the other two. Yeah. But I've, I haven't really left anything too tiny because that's useless. But so that's three like brand new baby two gallon panicle hydrangeas. Yeah, they look really good. Nice and uniform. Yeah, it's more about getting them to be uniform than anything else. So we'll come back later and break up those branches. So right here is a pinky winky. This was planted three years ago as a three gallon at the end of the summer. And it had a rough start. It did. We bought it as a clearance. We planted it. It struggled in the heat of the late summer. Uh, but it's come back. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to prune it down. Look, again, it's got like strong shoots from hard pruning from us. And now we can go back in and pretty it up a bit. So we're going to again cut off all these little tiny ones that we're not interested in. These, I think, are going to add something, so I'm going to leave them, even though they're pretty small. Cutting off anything that's crossing through the center. And then this one... How far back do you want to take it? I'm not going to take it too far back, because we want it to, to give us a show this year. So I feel like it might be two years. And then the quick fires that are next to it, those, that's a, they're a whole other story. Like, they were eaten in such a weird way. And then you gave them that hard prune down to the ground almost. And yeah. So I'm going to pick a height on these and just kind of prune at that height. We'll see what this does. Can't really mess it up, you know? Right. How's that look? It looks aggressive and necessary. And I'm excited to see what it looks like. Yeah. So that's that pinky winky. This is a quick fire that's older and more established. These get nibbled on by the deer and that's why there's so many weird yeah, see how it's tall in the middle and then in the front, there's a little bit of a shorter spot. Yeah. So this is going to take a little bit of time and energy and effort. So Christopher, if you want to grab your pruners and join me. So what do you say? Let's get rid of some spindly growth. How, do you want to take them down to like the same size as the pinky winky? I think we should. I mean, it looks really aggressive because it is aggressive. And again, prove a winner says one third. This is the way we do it. 
<laughs> but like gardening, there's no hard rules, right? This might be a good place to put that um, uh, wireless deer fence. Yes, definitely. I struggled. This with right that. here? Yeah. Oh, well, it's growing into this, so I would take that out. And then that comes out there. Does that make sense? Well, here we have these three pruned. And of course, we have the three matching hydrangeas on the other side of the Tromner to do. So we'll take after those. Wow, you're fast. Have you heard that cute little song on social media about being no sad gardeners? No sad gardeners. I did see that. It was so, so cute. And it goes through my head all the time. And I'm like, that's true. And I think what makes it even cuter is it's an eight-year-old singing it. <laughs> so right here we have bobos that are at the base of the Gothic arch. They kind of cover up the ugly legs of the climbing roses and also the clematis here, which is already in my way. Um, <laughs> that's a pruning for a whole other day between the rows, the clematis. So we're gonna size control these bobos. There's a lot of new spindly growth in here and it'll look great. These are pretty easy because once you get in there, I last year I took them back pretty hard. So they have kind of that same structure that the quick fire standard has. So once you get going in there, you'll see that they're, they're pretty good to go. Oh yeah, these are, it won't be hard. Once you get past the spindly stuff, there's a really nice structure built in here. Yeah. It's as if you knew what you were doing. You got to go hard at the beginning to reap the benefits later. I feel like I'm kneeling on something I shouldn't be kneeling on. Like, is there a plant under me I shouldn't be kneeling on? Um, salvia, probably. Okay. How's that? That looks great. Do they look equitable? They do. So this right here is a quick fire standard and we bought this on clearance probably five years ago for five dollars. It's done so well. I have a picture, Christopher, you can pop it up on the screen. It's doing very well. It gets part sun. So this is the east side of our house. So it gets sun all the way in the morning till this evening. It's underplanted with hellebores, some grasses, some invincible spirit twos. A few I'm things gonna... that I'm moving, by the way, because yeah. the grasses and the peony probably not doing so well covered up. Yeah, I mean, they're still happening, but I'm going to start by just kind of raising the canopy of this a tiny bit. I was thinking of taking these two branches. That's not a bad idea because they're not very visible under the Invincible Spirit 2 anyway. And so that's just going to raise the canopy a bit. And then you can see the remnants of a bird's nest from last year. That was fun. Oh, that was cute. Those robins were so mad at us. Every time we'd walk by, the boy robin would run around very angry at yeah, us. Yeah, because right here is uh, where we'd spend a lot. Of, we'd be outside, and anytime we came out, they'd be like, no, not here. So this one, I really, really worked hard to get the structure correct because it was such a tiny, ugly stick when we planted it. So you can see the branching is really good. Yeah. I'm it's... proud of how it's come along. It's got a lot of branching, so it has all of these flowers. And quick fires are a huge pollinator attractant. Everything loves this plant. So I'm going to go and kind of do my rule of three that I referenced earlier in the video that up until now I haven't really been able to use. So Christopher, are you able to kind of scooch in here? I can because I've got this. Oh, might be a little shaky for this, but that's OK. OK, so see how there's a lot of like branching <laughs> like we like. Yeah. So I do the one, two, three prune. One, two, three prune. So all of that hard work we've been putting into the younger ones is to get them to be this type of shape when they're older. So we have the one, two, three prune. One, two, three, prune. 
and just do that the entire way around. Yes, and then it gives them this beautiful symmetrical shape. The things that I'm counting again are those swollen nodes. One, two, one, two, three, prune. So now you can kind of see it coming together as a beautiful network. Yeah. And then these will branch out again. We can really see where each one of these splits has turned into the next split. And that's what we're going for when it's younger with that severe pruning. And look how easy this was to prune and the great shape that it has now. I think that's it. That's it. Look at that. Beautiful. That's the quick fire standard. So this right here is a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. This is a first edition's hydrangea. You can tell that this is one of our oldest hydrangeas and look at the shape that is established on it. It's got great branching. So it's going to be really easy to prune. One, two, three. One, two, three. So if you put the time in when they're young, you get to sound do... like a broken record, but one, two, three. It's not exactly easy as one, two, three, but until this part, once they're older. But you can see that this shape, after years of being pruned, is now creating this great branching, reduces the flopping. One, two, three, one, two, three. I mean, you still have the occasional rogue branch that grows inward. But look at that. Already looking great. I'm really proud of that. How many years ago did we plant this one? This is... This is probably like a... It, it's five or four. No. One, two, three. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, that was four. I would take that one all the way off because it's growing into the inward. Center. Yeah. I'm not sure if I love your pruners. Really? Or if mine are just really dull, that these feel so good in my hand. I would say that this handle, which I got you the extra large hand size. It fits my hand well. It, it's a little too big for me, but I like, I like the fact that the clasp is on the end a lot. shape is coming together. It's well worth investing the time in your shrubs when they're young. So those shrubs that we started the video with were very young and it looked painful, really painful and intense, the pruning that happened. But then you start to, over the years, develop this structure. We're almost there. Wow, look at the strength of this network up here. Yeah. So if you made it this far in the video, you can see why we did what we did at the beginning. Ta-da! Done. Looks great.
well done. So last, but certainly not least, we have the Limelight Hedge, obviously the largest collection of panicles we have. The 15 of them have been planted here for over five years. They are established, they are beautiful, and last year they took on some damage from mites. So what you can see here is what the mites did. They created this little like nest, nest spin yeah. spindly growth, really terrible. So we are going to be taking that growth out as well as using our rule of threes that we just talked about with the vanilla strawberry. And, and then up. once that's done, we will clean the debris very well. These are going to be getting sprayed with one more miticide treatment. And then we hope for the best. Yeah, so I'm going to start at one end. Christopher is going to start at the other end. We'll time it. And we'll see what It's not happens. a race. It's just probably, I think it's going to take us a good hour. What do you think? Yeah, this is going to take a while. It's going to be a, a solid hour of pruning. But once it's done, we will have our panicles complete. And it's it's going to look severe. Yeah. So, you know, but I'm excited. <laughs> All right. So let's get going. Here we go. Go. All right, so here is what is left of the hydrangea hedge, the limelight hydrangea hedge. After we pruned it, I just wanted to point out that I won. I pruned them a little bit faster. Um, <laughs> you should see Christopher's face. Mm -hmm. Once we got towards the center here where the mite damage was a little bit worse, we had to take them further down than we thought. So it's very severe. If you have healthy limelights, this is not the way to do it. But we're going to rake all of this up get the debris out from underneath it. And then at some point, not today, because our hoses aren't hooked up yet, but we're going to spray a miticide and then we'll rose tone them and keep on top of them. I mean, they look pretty good though. I they mean, do they, look good. It's, it's a severe prune. What do you think, Christopher? I think it's a moderately severe prune. This is the middle one. I mean, you can see we had to take it back real far. Yeah, so now it's time to get our rakes out, clean all of this up, and dispose of this debris. All right, so we have officially pruned every panicle hydrangea in our garden, if you can imagine. <laughs> oh, it was a Some lot. Some of them we didn't share with you here. We shared on Instagram because we had to put Christopher's mm. phone into charge, but it was a lot of fun. And so what we're going to do now is just finish raking up all the things behind us on the ground. Um, just a few sticks. Just a few sticks. And then we are going to see you in our next video for how we prune Annabelle-type hydrangeas. So again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Thanks for growing with us. <laughs>